right. Mm -hmm. We're going to be in Psalm 67 for those of you that are that come to the Sunday evening class. You know that's where we've been. Already had this prepared, so I uh, uh, decided to do this is just a little bit of a short notice, but uh, I wasn't sure if Papa was going to have anything prepared or not, so I just. I, Remove the confusion. This is the way we're, we're going to do it. Last uh, last week, for a uh, little bit of context and stuff, we looked at Psalm sixty six, and we uh, we talked quite a bit about praise, about modes of praise, about the uh, the importance of um, lifting God up, both individually and corporately as a people. Uh, the importance of those things and uh, how um, maybe lacking at times uh, we are in our in our striving to worship Him. Um, it should not be underestimated how important that is. In fact, in, in, in heaven, it, from what we can read in Revelation, it appears that there is always some kind of chorus going on at all times to yeah. uplift Him. And, and and one could you know especially from a human standpoint one could look at it and say well uh, that, that, that you know kind of, God seems to really need people to be patting him on the back all the time but uh, when you take into account that that everything that exists exists only because He deemed it so it only it only it, it only makes sense to praise and honor him and only it, 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 it is it is bare minimum for any creation that God has ever placed upon this earth to offer praise back to him for the life that they have um, in fact you said well not everybody does that well at the end of time when everybody's judged every single creature that has ever existed will have their opportunity to offer praise of him no matter where they end up ultimately for the rest of right. eternity um, so we looked at all that through Psalm uh, through Psalm uh, sixty uh, six, and uh, uh, we're gonna have to do a lot of padding today because Psalm sixty seven is one of the shorter ones that we've looked at recently, and of course it would land on the day when we have a you know a good forty minutes half hour to fill up. Um, but uh, Psalm sixty seven is by all accounts from what I have have, have looked at in different uh, resources and commentaries and stuff a song about being a missionary, which I think is very, uh, very interesting since Brother Trine was supposed to be here this week. I actually was not going to get a chance to teach this, uh, but uh, he was he was supposed to be here, and it's interesting that this psalm uh, has a lot about um, um, missions. Um, and although there's different ways that I've seen people interpret this chapter, to me, Psalm 67 is a, a seven-verse summary of the the church age and the end of times and how all of it is going to uh, ultimately fit together and some of the roles that we're going to play in it. So we'll start in, uh, in um, uh, uh, the first verse here, but uh, I did want to point out very quickly uh, the uh, underneath uh, the chapter here it says to the chief musician on Neganoth a psalm or song now this is supposed to be, could be sang or recited this is another one of those type of songs and then the first verse goes uh, God be merciful to us and bless us and cause his face to shine upon us Selah that thy way may be known upon the earth thy saving health among all nations um, the first verse um, has three requests for mercy, for blessing, and for the face of God to shine down on them. The, the mercy uh, that he's requesting here is something that we should seek out for every day. Amen. Think, if you will, for a moment when we, when we go out and if this is the mission song, let's put everything as many con in, in that context as we can. If we go out into the world and we present Christ to others, um, one of the first things that we need to make sure that we do is that we have got all the leaven 
removed from our lives, that we can go with a pure heart and a pure mind to present. Now, are we are we pure and are we are we perfect people? No, that, that's why we go before God every day and repent of our repent of our sins. Uh, the, the 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 sometimes the very air that we breathe is sinful. <laughs> uh, we, we 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 fight the flesh. We struggle with the flesh. We we uh, we 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 try to restrain the flesh. But ultimately, because we're not Jesus and we're not God, we are deemed to fail. Uh, but that doesn't that doesn't excuse us from that failure. You know. It, um, uh, uh, you know, in the, in the same way, the ignorance of the law is no excuse. The, the being just because we're made of um, even saved folks, we're made of something that is tethered to sin, does not mean that we're excused from it. So the first thing that they ask is, "Be merciful for, for us." We're going to come. We're going to present our. We're going to present our sins. We're going to say. Uh, we're going to. We're going to um, uh, 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 ask for forgiveness for those sins, and we're going to request mercy. He goes on further and says. And bless us. Uh, now, this is the um, this is the part where he's looking for increase in the labors that they're fixing to take place in. So we 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 clear ourselves up, we square ourselves up with God, and then we look to him and say, "We're fixing to go out, and we're fixing to uh, we're fixing to look uh, for your lost sheep. We're fixing to present your word. We're fixing to scatter." The seed about, and hopefully some something takes root yeah. somewhere, and we need you to bless, to, to bless us. There's actually later in this chapter it talks about uh, the earth yielding her increase, and I, I'm going to talk about that in, in in a few minutes. But um, you know the 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 parable of the sower, I think, really indicates um, where we exist as Christians as far as spreading the word of God. There is no guarantee of success. If you look at the parable of the sower, it just kind of, the, the way he was doing it, he was just sort of talk, it's like sowing grass seed. You know, you, you, if, if you sow grass seed, we got spreaders and stuff, you know, so you crank it and, whoosh, and it comes out. And then you, you, try, you try to cover as much area with grass seed as possible. Why? Because there's a solid chance that some of that's not going to go up. Grass is a very interesting plant in that it, if I don't want it to grow up in the middle of this church building, it'll grow right there on that floor. <laughs> on nothing. And if I want it to grow out there on a good piece of ground, I fertilize it. I've got I've got good dirt set up there. It wouldn't grow there if you begged it and pleaded to. And and that's how grass sowing is. Um, and the parable of the sower looks like that spreading the word of the God feels much the same way. And you're just sort of tossing it out there, and you're hoping something comes up. And we see many instances in that parable about uh, some of it not coming at all. We have we have some that comes up very quickly, but doesn't have any any depth, any any foundation for it to continue its growth life, and then some falls on the ground, uh, and and it grows up. The um, the key of this verse here in the middle here is for us to ask that those handfuls of purpose, if you will, fall in the right places, that they get to the right people, that they uh, you know. The spreading of God's word is not accidental. We're all placed in specific roles and specific purposes at specific times for specific people. It, it, there's, there's no accident. If a sparrow does not fall without the eye of God, then you spreading the gospel does not fall on deaf ears. Now, Amen. is your word going to stand as a testament against them one day? Possibly. I hope not. I, you know, I, I hope that everything I say has a positive effect. But one day there will be some things that we've said to some people and they'll say, that was your opportunity and you completely rejected me yet again. Amen. Um, uh, and then in other, in other cases, you get a nice healthy plan. You, 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 you get growth. You get, and, and, and we, we need to, as we're going out, as we're beginning this, this, our, our mission efforts, and, and this is, is this in our day to day lives? Is this in, in, a, in a more organized mission effort like a missionary? Is this, is it, we, we need to ask for that increase. Uh, you, you know, uh, um, what, what is, uh, what did Paul say in the New Testament? Uh, uh, some sowed, some water, but God gave the increase. Paraphrasing, obviously. Uh, uh, but, but, it, we, we can we can you know the, the sower sowed but we don't we don't have the ability to cause plants. That's like my example about grass. You can't force a plant to grow. If it grows, it grows. 
And sometimes a seed is dead. <laughs> sometimes the ground is bad. You just can't force it. So we need to look to the one who, who, who created the plant, who has the ability literally to make water come out of dry rocks, to uh, make uh, food fall from the sky, uh, to bless our efforts, to increase our efforts, to give them sin. And then it goes on in verse, and cause his face to shine upon us, seal of. The last part of the verse actually sort of refers to God. Now remember that, all the Psalms were written in Israel, which is in the Middle East. Um, and you have to take that into a little bit of context. This idea of causing your face to shine on me, actually, uh, I read in one place, may have something to do with Middle Eastern monarchs. Um, and for them to um, look favorably upon something was to have their face shine upon you. It was, it was, it was, uh, it was for them to look at the efforts of a vassal and to be pleased with it. There's an inverse there where they're not pleased with it, but the, the request here, you have three big requests for the mission efforts, is, is, is to be merciful to us, that, that, we, that our sins would be forgiven, that, that our efforts would be blessed, and that God would look down on all the things that we've done and be pleased with our effort, that our efforts would be praiseworthy to Him. And then He rests. At the end of the verse there. Uh, verse 2. Why are we doing all this? Well, here verse 2 puts all of verse 1 in context. That thy way may be known upon the earth, thy saving health among all the nations. Now, um, uh, the correlations between verse 2 and if you go to Matthew and look at the Great Commission cannot be overlooked here. That thy way may be known on all the earth, and thy saving health or salvation among all the nations. What is the? Why are we requesting three things that could be very selfish if taken completely out of context from verse one? Why are we asking for those things so that we can perpetuate the knowledge and the gospel of Jesus Christ to as many people as humanly possible? How do we reach uh, the world? How, how, how do we how do we go out? I don't think there's a single person in this room that could probably drop everything that they have right now and just and, and just go. You, if you were asked to, you probably would. Uh, but but God has to place those things in our paths. He's 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 got to, he's, he's got to light the way. He's got to bless us. And and and, and it, it, it is a difficult thing to reach people. If you go to the to the other side where Brother Catrine is down there in, in, in Guyana, we've got missionaries over in in, in Europe, we've got missionaries in, in 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 all these places, and yet there are still people that haven't known God. And you know what? This is this is this is the crazy thing. Even in our own country, there are people being born every day that have never heard right. the gospel of, of, of Jesus Christ. It is it is with that thought in mind that we make the request that we make. Why do we ask for good health? Why do we ask for uh, uh, um, uh, uh, increase and in, 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 in good things in our family? It should never be a selfish thing. Well, I want to live comfortably. That should never be the source of our request to God. Verse 1 and verse 2 as a unit together indicate that when we make requests for blessing, it should be to further God's kingdom. It should be to further his goals, not yours. Is that you know we're, we're, we don't ask for uh, you know uh, uh, you know our, our, our us to be you know healthy, wealthy, and wise every single day, just so that we can live comfortably in a life that, in God's eyes, is over that quick. Yeah. It, this the, the the things that we do here don't matter in a larger sense unless they're done for Him. Those are the only things that we can gain anything back on. In the real long term, eternity's terms. Let the people praise thee, O God. Let all the people praise thee. Now, why do we want to go? Verse 3 elaborates on verse 2 and says, So that everyone can praise you. So we ask for help, so that we can deliver the gospel to other people, so that they can turn and they can praise God. This is this is ultimately. And I, the reason that I sort of brought, even though you know this is not the class for that, that I brought chapter 66 into our discussion here 
is because this is all about making sure this is it's a cycle of praise. So so we 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 do that we we ask for blessings so that we can that we can spread the gospel so that people can praise thee and so that those people can start that cycle all over again. And round it round it goes and 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 perpetuates. You know I, I think I think if you look at the New Testament you can see that seed sort of blossom in all directions. When when they find when 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 Saul uh, uh, soon to be called Paul finally busted up everything at Jerusalem and got everybody spread out all over um, uh, Asia Minor and, and, and into uh, the uh, into Europe. You you finally saw that seed plant. I mean, one man, Paul. That th think think of all the things that he did and all the people that he spread to. There are literal books written about the churches that spread out from him. And you know what? There were people that spread out from, spread out from there. You have you have talk about uh, Timothy. You have you have uh, you have uh, uh, Priscilla and Aquila, and those people spun out of those relationships, and and, and they furthered the gospel even further. By means of Paul, so you know you think about the. You, well, I don't have. I have a very low impact. Well, you're. How many people do you come in contact with in a day? And of those people, how many are you spreading the gospel to, speaking of the Lord to? Because that will have a, a, a viral, if you will, <laughs> a effect. Mm -hmm. It will spread, and if the Lord lets it take seed, it'll pop out just like chicken pox. And they're not going to be able to hide it either, and they're going to spread it to everybody yeah. else as well. Um, oh, let the nations be glad and sing for joy, for thou shalt judge the people righteously and govern the nations upon the earth. Selah. Now, verse 4 goes past this mission age, the thing that we were left to do. It goes past the Great Commission and looks forward to a better time. It says, uh, let, oh, let the nations be glad and sing for joy. Why? For thou shalt judge the, the people righteously and govern the nations on the earth. Now, this is not currently happening. This is not this, this, this governmental type rule. Now God, now, God places judgment, passes judgment every single day, I think. Um, but th this governmental rule is not currently happening. What is he looking forward to? Well, you can go go to Revelation, was it, was it chapter 20-ish, 1920, somewhere in there, and, and look at Christ's thousand-year reign. This is that this this is what he saw the the, uh, the 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 ultimate goal of all of this is to look forward to the nation that that he's going to rule, that that this this kingdom that he's going to set up, and. Um, and rule and reign in. And then verse 5 says, Let the people praise thee, O God. Let all the people praise thee. Now, being judged. Look look around Revelation. Jesus says that in that thousand, or the Bible says that Jesus in that thousand year reign is going to rule with a rod of iron. Uh, rods of iron are not giving. They're not uh, uh, um, they're not uh, 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 yielding, they do not display a lot of, uh, of of kindness. I can only think of a couple of things that rods of iron are good for, um, and and uh, and and Jesus is going to display a lot more attributes that his father displays, Jehovah God displays uh, during that time. And we can look at that, and we can think of you know, and, and I'm, I'm not really big into the left behind stuff. I think a lot of it's um, 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 overblown. I think I think the impact of the rapture is going to be much less than uh, than what uh, what they, they claim it's going to be. But despite all that, think about the people that right. If we were all taken right now, who would be left behind? Yeah, by their own admission of salvation or not, who's going to be left behind? All right, now think about those people and thinking about them being righteously judged by an Almighty God. Mm -hmm. And that's not something to be. That, that just fills, our, especially our flesh, with a lot of joy. But the psalmist here says, let the people praise thee. This is a praiseworthy action. Him ruling and reigning and passing judgment, no matter what it is, is righteous. Why? Well, you know, it, it's different than the judgment that, you know, just to call, that Jared would pass out. Or that I would pass out. Uh, maybe I'm knowledgeable on a few things, but my judgment's always going to be flawed. Why? Because I'm flawed. I'm not a perfect judge. 
There's a whole host of factors that play into that, but God is both uh, is both the embodiment of the law from which he judges from. He's completely impartial. He looks down from his judgment seat and he can see the not not you know it's different from a judge on, on a court stand where you have to have lawyers present cases. God can look right through you into your soul and know the thoughts and then you're, you're not going to lie. You can't stand before him and 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 and, and uh, 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 break your oath. Uh, and and lie to the court, it's not going to happen. That's harsh terms. It hurts a little bit, especially when you think about the people that could be involved, separate and apart of the Lord moving. But it's praiseworthy. It is. Uh, Cora. And all of his bunch, and Brother Larry's uh, sermon from last week, all of his bunch going alive into the pit. That was a justified, praiseworthy action. Then shall the earth yield her increase, and God, even our God, shall bless us. Now, we look even further forward. I, I think we're past the judgment, we're past the we're past the white throne, and, and then I think we're talking we're literally talking about the new king. Then the earth shall yield her increase. Now, there are two passages in Genesis that let us know that the earth currently is incapable of doing everything that we want it to do. Literally incapable of it. Uh, in Genesis, God judges Adam for his sin and says um, thorns and thistles right. shall bring forth thee. And then further, he tells his son Cain, the earth shall not yield its increase to you. Yeah. It, nor not, not it, it, it uses the word strength. It shall not give the strength to you. So we live on an earth that has been tainted, not by its actions, but by our very presence. Uh, and, and cursed for our sake. But this looks forward to a time when the earth shall yield it in strength. And then he goes on and says, And God, even our own God, shall bless us. Now, I think it's interesting because we've talked about God blessing us through various parts of this chapter. But it, it goes, it says, And God, and then in, in this, in this uh, non essential phrase cut off by these commas, it says, Even our own God shall bless us. Now, why does it do that? First of all, it's taking possession, and I think it's going. It, it is. It is indicating the intimacy with which that kingdom will be. Right? God will walk up and down on this earth again with us. It, 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 from everything we can read in Revelations, there'll be an actual kingdom, an actual New Jerusalem, where the actual form of God will be present, will be judging, will be ruling, and will be reigning. Now. What is this? And I've said this many times. The entire book of the entire book from front to back is all about getting us back to where they were in Genesis, where God could walk and talk in the cool of the evening with the people that He wanted to be with. He, he, he his, it, the entire plan is to get us back to pure, so that He can dwell with us directly. And I think that's why it says it goes. It just doesn't say, "And God shall bless us." No, it's more intimate. And God, even our God. The one who saved our son. Mm -hmm. The one, the, the one who, who we possess. And he possesses us. Mm -hmm. the, the, one, the one that loved us enough to do things. There, 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 there's so much intimacy placed in that. And I think we forget how, how precious that fact is. That, that not only is, are, are we possessive of him, but he's possessive of us. That's why he gets so jealous when we go out and we do crazy stuff half the time. We're, 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 he, we belong to him. If, if, if you're, if, gentlemen, if your wife and ladies, if your husband uh, just ran around with everything that went out there, you'd be jealous. You'd be upset. It would hurt your feelings. It would make you think that, hey, that person doesn't love me anymore. No. no. It would hurt. No. And that is how God feels about us being sinful. You're running around with whoever you want to run with. But I'm your God. 
we have this intimacy. We, we have this really, and, and you can go even further. You know, last night, AJ uh, was upset because uh, we had a little thunderstorm, a couple rolls of thunder, and here he comes popping out of bed, and he runs in there on the couch. And, uh, and, and he, first of all, he knew, he knew, you know, as a child, you know where to run. You know, you, you run, when you're scared, you run to your parents. And I picked him up and I put him on my lap and he was comfortable. We had rolls and rolls of thunder. He never jumped again and whatnot. Why? Because he felt safe and he felt comfortable. And there's a relationship there where he knows that it doesn't matter what big bad noises happen. Dad's going to protect me. I'm, I, I'm here in the safety of his arms. And, and, and we, we have that relationship. Or we, we can have that relationship with God. But oftentimes we just reject it. God, I, I, I think, separate or part of this non-essential phrase, it would have, and, and God shall bless us, it would have that sterile feel. It would be it would be how sometimes I think that we view God. God is this ephemeral being that, yes, he saved us, but he's sort of up in the clouds somewhere, and I feel like sometimes he doesn't really affect my life, and, and that's and that's where we kind of place God most of the time. Yeah. He, 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 he is, he's there, but he's not really there, you know? He, 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 he doesn't directly affect my day-to-day, minute-to-minute. When nothing can bother me from the truth, he, 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 he's actually uh, more involved than probably some of your own family members, your own spouses, your own, uh, your own friends. Verse 7, God shall bless us, and all the ends of the earth shall fear him. Now, in goal. The blessing of God upon his people. Why? So all the ends of the earth shall fear him. Now you think, well, you want we're supposed to we're supposed to show God's love. We're supposed to remember what I believe it's in Proverbs it says that the the fear of the Lord is the beginning mm-hmm. of knowledge. The fear here, I think, is what, what it's referring to, that for us to be blessed so that everyone can know. Him, that they can have that little bit of fear, the, the ultimate realization of the presence of an almighty God. And beyond that, it's all the work of God. Once we've conveyed God, it's all the work of God after that. And, and, and so verse 7, I think, kind of sums up the end goal for the missionary. Pray that the Lord will bless us so that we can convey the gospel to as many people as possible. And when all the ends of the earth have heard him, we've done our duty. We, we've been there. That's one of the reasons, and, and, and not, to, not to toot my own home, that I started uh, the internet stuff because th- there is no wider net that can be cast uh, than to get people on the internet. Everybody has a phone. Everybody has, even, even, even in third world countries, they have, they have, they have that stuff. And so that, that, that's important, but I think, I think even on, on, on less of a global scale, you can go down to your personal relationships. People are literally, uh, we have a midwife in the room, there are people being born every single day, and, and those infants are new people that don't know of God. Reach out to people, ask the Lord to bless your son. You've got, you've got a bag full of seed to spread out there. Right. Is all of it going to take hold? No, and probably in your lifetime that you may never see any of that grow up, but someday it might. The seed might germinate. The Lord might place an increase on it, and uh, we we can reap. It's interesting to note that this psalm is actually supposed to. Be, a lot of people say it's supposed to be sung in the harvest time. A missionary song about harvest. Uh, is is, a, is 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 an interesting is an interesting thought that the. the the thought there being that we go forth to sow knowing faith in faith that we're going to reap something back. Yeah. All right, that will uh, wrap us up for today. Y'all are dismissed.